church started. Uh, and so those are there in the foyer. Uh, and then also uh, coming up in November, uh, or, uh, we're going to be also praying for the persecuted church. And so we'll, we have this map here. Uh, and then also in the foyer. And we're going to be handing out, uh, probably next week, we're going to hand out um, booklets about different countries. And we're going to do uh, kind of a, a different type of presentation on the persecuted church. Uh, but it, it'll be interactive. Uh, and, a, and a couple people are going to be uh, sharing because uh, the church is so diverse um, with folks from other countries here. Uh, and so they're going to pray for their, their uh, home countries. And so it's going to be uh, really unique and I think really special uh, for us. So that's coming next week and, and it'll be a different type of service here. Um, also today, uh, when, uh, today at 3.30 is youth group. Uh, and so middle schoolers and high schoolers are all invited. If you want to get involved, see George and Matt. Uh, also, one of the things we're going to do uh, this month, we're going to do a trunk or treat. Uh, so trunk or treat is going to be here on this half of the parking lot, and it'll be um, October 30th, uh, and then we'll run it. Uh, we'll try to keep it in the light, so we'll do it from 3 to 5. Uh, and so if you want, we'll have uh, sign-ups next week. So if you'd like to uh, dress up your uh, cars, that will be a lot of fun. Again, remember, no scary stuff when we're, we're it's going to be an outreach for us, and so we'll try to get uh, some stuff like uh, bounce houses and uh, uh, barbecue going. So if you'd like to serve in that way, uh, we'd love for that to be a part of uh, your you and your mission. And so, uh, again, it's October 30th, and again, it'll be from 3 to 5 here at the church, and it'll be in the parking lot. So if you'd like to uh, be a part of that, um, we'll, we'll get the sign-ups going next week, but we're just kind of doing, uh, doing the dates for you. Uh, also, Tuesdays uh, from birth to five is the Play and Learn group that's here at the fellowship. It's open to the public. Um, play and Learn uh, birth, birth to five. Uh, Katie heads that up, and it's been a, uh, it's open to the public, and it's free, and it starts at noon, uh, and goes to one thirty. And so, uh, please be praying for that. It's been neat uh, as you open the doors. Uh, especially, we're partnering with the uh, school district which is uh, unique, and, you know, that's the government, and so <laughs> that's a really interesting partnership. Uh, so be praying for that, uh, but they allow us to do our own curriculum and host it here at the church and staffed by our own church, so it's, it's a blessing. So, uh, but again, that's on Tuesdays from noon to 1.30, too. So lots happening, and uh, let's go ahead and stand, and uh, we're going to uh, begin and just worship. Uh, we're going to sing some songs. We'll uh, take some communion. We'll have offering. We'll, then we'll take a break, and then we'll get in the sermon, and then we'll have uh, children's classes after uh, music time. So, uh, Lord, we just love you and we thank you, God, as we just kind of take a breath from the week, Lord, uh, and all that that entails, Lord, from work and, and uh, raising our kids and, and uh, glorifying you, Lord. Father, what a blessing it is just to come and to be intentional this morning, focus our hearts, our minds upon you, Jesus. Uh, and we just love you so much. And, and now as we sing songs, as we read scriptures, as we partake, Lord, in your body, Lord, uh, and blood there in communion, Lord, remembering your sacrifice that you've made. Father, it's such a blessing, Lord. And so we, I pray that we wouldn't take it for granted, Lord, but God, that we would lean in. And uh, Father, may you be lifted up and magnified now, God, in this place, in this time, Lord. We love you so, so much so much, God. You're so good. And it's in your good name we pray all these things and all God's people would say, Amen. Walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. You're trying to fill the same old holes inside. There's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. 
If you need freedom, the saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains, he's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day and the dead of night. We all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We all run the things we know just ain't right. There's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. Do you feel lost? He's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains, he's a chain breaker. You believe it, you receive it. Can feel it, somebody testify. You believe it, you receive it. You can feel it, somebody testify, testify. You believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. You got pain. He's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a main maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. You got chains. He's a chain breaker. Well, good morning to you. It's great to see all of you. We're going to uh, continue our worship with a time of communion as we do every Sunday. We take the time to remember our Lord and what he's done for us on the cross, and it's a time for us to... Um, be able to reflect on on the tremendous sacrifice he's made on our on our behalf, and so we take this uh, very seriously. We we take some time to pray, and then we come to the partake of these elements that helps us to remember, and we honor him as we do this. So I want to invite you to come up as the Lord to the Lord's table as the Spirit leads you.
love I'm no stranger to the prison I worn the shackles and the chains but I I'm not going back, I'll never be the same, that's why I sing, all my hope is in Jesus, thank God my yesterday is gone. a stone it was covered in shame when he came for me I couldn't run couldn't run from his presence couldn't run couldn't run from his arms Jesus he loves me he loves How can it be? He loves me. He is for me. It was a fire deep in my soul. I'll never be the same. Step out of the dark into the light when he called my name I couldn't run couldn't run from his presence I couldn't run couldn't run from his arms Jesus he loves me he 
loves me, He is for me. Jesus, how can it be? He loves me, He is for me. He holds the star and He holds my heart with healing hands that bear the scar that rugged cross where he died for me my only hope my everything jesus he loves me loves me Jesus how can it be he loves me he is for me he loves me he loves me he loves me he loves me he is for God, it's amazing, oh, Jesus loves me. Yeah. Hey, well, at this time, we're going to uh, receive up free will gifts, tithes, offerings. There's some joy boxes around the, the fellowship here. Also, that germ-free option, if you'd like it gvfchurch.org. I want to share with you from uh, Proverbs chapter 3. <laughs> it says this in verse 5 and 6. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Verse 9 and 10 says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all that you produce. Then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will be bursting with wine. What a great promise and a great proverb for us, and, and especially as we want to follow Christ in all we think, say, and do. Uh, and so praise the Lord, what a great opportunity now. So would you join me? We're going to pray. Uh, we're going to pray for the world uh, and, and our community here. And uh, if there's a, a, a need of, uh, or a concern, man, let's just go before the Lord now together. Father, we love you and we thank you. Father, we, Lord, lift up Lord, this, uh, this world, Lord, from Afghanistan, Lord, to the Ukraine, there's all kinds of stuff happening. Lord, we uh, pray for our brothers and sisters there in Germany, Lord, uh, with their uh, pipeline that's been destroyed. God, uh, we just, uh, man, yeah, we just lift it all to you, Lord. And as we look at the world, uh, Father, it, it's God's so desperate for you and, and such a need for you, Lord. And so we thank you, God, that you're at work, even if we don't feel like you are, uh, or if we don't see it with our eye, God, that you're still at work. Lord, Father, we want to lift up all those uh, who have been uh, affected and evacuated there in Florida uh, and on the East Coast, Lord, we pray for them, Lord, uh, who are uh, out of electricity and uh, just out of, just in a real bad, tough spot in the, the lives that have been lost, Lord, we pray. Uh, God, that you would help our brothers and sisters there, especially there in Florida, uh, God, who are suffering uh, so much because of this hurricane. Lord, we just lift them to you now, God. We pray, uh, Father, here uh, for the West Coast, Lord, when we just mention the word California, it just kind of makes us sick, Lord. Uh, and, uh, Father, all that's happening there uh, politically uh, and just, man, it's just crazy to think about, Lord. And so we pray, and too, for here for Oregon and its upcoming, uh, the governor race, Lord, we pray, uh, Father, that we would be responsible citizens, Lord. We would, uh, Father, do uh, our part, register to vote and pray and, and uh, be good citizens in that sense, Lord. Uh, and so we pray for that election. We pray for your will to be done, God, here on earth, God, as it is in heaven. Uh, Lord, we pray uh, for that. God, we lift up our community, Lord, that's been ravaged from all the wildfires, Lord, from the Almeida to the Obechain, God, and all the um, displaced people and homeless people uh, here locally, Lord, we, we lift them to you and pray that you would intervene. God, we pray for those needing uh, jobs and, and uh, 
God, that you would help them in that to be able to find the careers and the jobs that you would have for them, Lord, and have appointed for them, Lord, we pray. God, I pray if there be needs and concerns in the body here, whether that be a physical, uh, God, concerns from uh, just ailments, Lord, whatever that is, God, you know, and God, even too for housing too here in the body, we pray, Lord, we pray that we would be used for your glory. Lord, we pray that, God, the, the gospel would come and, and, and saturate us in our heart and that we would be bold in the proclamation of it, Lord, uh, and we wouldn't be just hearers of your word, God, but doers, Lord, and so we thank you, God, for that, and uh, we just pray, yeah, that you would, uh, yeah, be glorified, magnified in our lives all, that, uh, yeah, Lord, all the days that we live, Lord. Father, and so to that end, we pray, Lord, we now as we lift up these free will gifts and tithes, Lord, we're grateful, Lord, for the work that you've done, provided in our lives, just as Adam and Eve, God, were called uh, into the garden to protect it, to cultivate it, to do it, Lord, and have dominion over it, Lord, that we would do the same, God, with, uh, Father, all the gifts and talents and treasures that you've blessed and bestowed on us, Lord, it's all yours, Lord, and so we recognize that, and we're grateful for that, Lord, we love you so much so, so much. God, it's your good name. We pray all these things and all God's people would say, amen. Well, let's go ahead and stand. We're going to continue in worship. Father, forgive me for taking so long to see that you're all I need. With every heart beating my chest, Lord, I surrender all that I have. The days yet to come, the days in the past, I'm giving you all I am. With lifted hands, with lifted hands, you show me mercy when I've done nothing to deserve it. You've seen the best in me beneath the dust, because that's how you love, that's how you love. You rush through my veins, I'm wrecked and I'm changed, and my soul will sing. With every heart beating my chest, Lord, I surrender all that I have. The days yet to come, the days in the past, I'm giving you all I with lifted hands, with lifted hands. Heaven or grave, there is no place I can go to escape your love, no. Heaven or grave, there is no place I can go to escape your love. With every heart beat in my chest, Lord, I surrender all that I have. The days yet to come, the days in the past, I'm giving you all, all that I am. I'm giving you all, all that I am with lifted hands. With lifted hands, with lifted hands, with lifted hands. 
Seems like all I can see was a struggle. Haunted the ghost that lived in my past. Bound up in shackles of all of my failures. Wondering how long is this gonna last? Then you look at this prisoner and say to me, son, stop fighting a fight that's already been won. I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. Now I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. I'm redeemed. All my life I've been called unworthy. by the voice of my shame and regret when I hear you whisper child lift up your head I remember oh God you're not done with me yet I am redeemed you said me So I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain. Now I'm not who I used to be, because I don't have to be the old man inside of me, because his day is long dead and gone, because I've got a new name, a new life, I'm not the same, a hope that will carry me home. I am redeemed, you set me free, so I'll shake off these heavy chains, wipe away every stain, now I'm not who I used to be, no, I'm not who I used to be, no, I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. Thank God I'm redeemed. Father God, we just thank you for uh, the great hope that you give us, Lord. We just recognize where we used to be, Lord, um, in lives apart from you, God, before we knew you how hopeless and how futile everything was, Lord. How we tried to do different things to fill our hearts, and yet um, there's nothing that satisfies like you do, Lord. And we just recognize that in your presence there is fullness of joy, Lord, and that at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I just pray that we would help us, Lord, to remember how attractive you are and that we will be always be drawn to you lord and not so distracted we're so prone to wander lord i pray that our hearts would be about you this morning as we hear from you as we fellowship god we just thank you god for being here god to meet us in this worship dwelling in the praises of your people lord may you just bless the rest of this day lord in jesus name we pray amen so uh, we're going to take a short break. Um, the kids are dismissed to the Sunday school class, and we'll see you back in a few minutes.
check. Good morning. Good morning. Well, good to see you. God bless you. We're going to be hitting uh, the road here with the book of Romans, getting into Romans chapter 1, everybody's favorite there. Uh, as I think about uh, where we're at in the fall, one of the things that keeps coming up, how do you cure somebody with a pumpkin spice addiction? Apply a pumpkin patch, I guess, is what I heard. <laughs> what kind of vest do you wear uh, in the fall? All right, any vest wearers here? A harvest, okay, nice, all right. I won't quit my day job. Uh (laughs) Well, if you got your Bible, uh, those are epically horrible jokes, you're welcome. Uh, (laughs) I can do that all day long, thank you, Google. Uh, Yeah, well, grab your Bibles, we're going to be in uh, Romans chapter 1. So we've went through uh, Luke, Acts, and now we're coming into uh, Romans, and uh, buckle up, it'll be a good one. Today, the title uh, that we're going to be looking at is that everybody needs the gospel, and that is so true, and as you, man, just think about the world today, oh my goodness, really, really, really does, and so today, uh, this is penned uh, by Paul, and uh, this was uh, in Paul's third missionary journey when he was longing, uh, desiring to go to Rome, hadn't went to Rome at this time, and was able to pin this letter um, the main idea today is that humankind has chosen to reject the clear evidence of God's existence and his rule. God has allowed the human race to demonstrate itself exactly how devastating life can be when lived in rebellion against God. And as you think about 2022 in the United States of America, you can say, yeah, that's not true. And so today, in Romans chapter number 1, we're going to be specifically in verses 18 through 32. And what we're going to see here, I'm just going to uh, give you a quick snapshot before we get into the text here, is that Paul, uh, that he's explaining that the glory and the truth about God has been so suppressed by mankind that it's having to be re-revealed to the human race. And, and how that is going to be re-revealed is through the preaching of the gospel here. Um, and while the preaching of the gospel is happening, the wrath of God is being revealed against those who, by their suppression of their knowledge of God, uh, do this against those who are they're suppressing the knowledge of God. Uh, they don't know him and keep others from knowing him as well. Uh, and so this is a heavy text, a heavy text. Uh, and, and ultimately, too, when we come to texts in the Bible, it's that it's infallible, God's word. It's perfect. Uh, and that it is penned by uh, the Holy Spirit. And he uses human hands. And, and Paul, as you remember, he, his name was Saul. And he was a great persecutor of Christians, a Pharisee, a Jew of Jews. And um, man, once he got converted, remember the blinding light on the road to Damascus there, man, that Jesus commissioned him, that he was going to preach to the Gentiles. And so here, this is what, <coughs> excuse me, is that uh, he's going to be sharing specifically in this text here in chapter 1, verses uh, 18 through 32, uh, to this Gentile world, that they're guilty. They're guilty here. And, And ultimately this is that until a person knows that he's a sinner, he can't appreciate the gracious salvation of God, which, you know, totally true here in Jesus Christ, and it's followed. What he's going to do, he's going to have a pattern here. We're going to see this throughout the book of Romans here is that there's going to be first law and condemnation, then grace and salvation. And so today he's going to use three declarations, and that's what we're going to look at. Uh, number one, in verses 18 through 20, we're going to look at the, we're going to, the guys, we're going to have the R's for us. So you got your three R's here. So everybody who's like uh, got Baptist roots, you're going to, we're going to really feel that. So our first R is the revelation of the wrath of God. That's going to be uh, in verses 18 through 20. Uh, secondly, we're, our second R is going to be in verses 21 uh, through 23, and that's going to be the reason for wrath. You got that? You got that? Uh, and then the next one is going to be verse 24 through 32, and it's going to be the results of the wrath of God. So that's a quick snapshot for us as we think about uh, what we're going to be looking at and reading. So grab your Bibles. Uh, we're going to be reading uh, from verse 18 through, and we'll finish the chapter 32. Uh, So grab your Bibles here, or your apps, and it says this, it says verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, 
who by their unrighteousness suppressed the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely uh, his eternal power and his divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. And so they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Verse 22, claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Verse 24, therefore God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who, has, who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 26, for this reason, God gave, up, gave them up to dishonorable passions. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless, Though they know God's righteous decrees that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Well, this is God's heavy, heavy hitting word here today. Praise the Lord in that. Let's just take a moment now in, in silence and if you would, jo would join me in just closing your eyes and let's allow God's word to soak into our heart and our lives just as, as it wants to do. Lord, we thank you for your word. God, we thank you for truth. Lord, in an age, in an era, in a time, Lord, where our world is extremely lost. Father, and as we read today's text, we're just, it mirrors our culture, it mirrors our society, Lord. And as we think about, man, just those who are so lost, God, we pray for them. We pray, God, uh, for those people that you've put in our families, in our lives, in our hearts, Lord, to be able to share the good news of truth. Lord, and what truth does, it sets us free. And whom the Son has set free, he is free indeed. And so, Father, we thank you for your truth, Lord. Now, when we pray, Father, you're the blessing on your word as it's being proclaimed and going out, Lord. Uh, God, may you be glorified, magnified, Lord, now in this time we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you. <laughs> a little, it got a little quiet. <laughs> uh, as we look at today's text here, Paul's setting this stage, uh, and he's setting it uh, in three sad states. And he's making, he's speaking truth. And, and, and now, this is really good for us to hear truth, because a lot of times uh, we are programmed or we have an appetite uh, for people's opinions that are based solely on that. They're trying to make money, right, in the media, 
uh, in, the, in, in the entertainment business here. Uh, and, and we've believed this lie uh, about love is love. And, and uh, it's, it's so crazy uh, to be thinking about where our world is and what all is going on it. And here comes Paul's letter to the Romans here uh, in about the uh, year 54 A.D. And, and he's specifically writing there to the, to the church there within in Rome. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a tough, tough place here. But this picture here that, that, that Paul is painting for us, as I want us to, you know, this, it, it's, it's real. And, and I think so many times we tend to uh, have our head uh, in the clouds with unicorns and, and uh, rainbows kind of stuff. But here, Paul's bringing it right at the street level here. Uh, and, and just, I have a quote uh, from Martin Luther. Do we have that slide? That's of uh, Martin Luther. And uh, we'll pull that up here. And Martin Luther, the fifth century monk here. And, uh, and uh, what he says here, he says, When I look at myself, I don't see how I can be saved. But when I look at Christ, uh, I don't see how I can be lost. I don't see how I can be lost here. Um, and so let's just look at this text. And we're going to start, let's grab our Bibles, let's look at verse 18, we're just going to dive into it. Here, uh, we're looking at, for the wrath of God, verse 18, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, whom by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Golly, I mean, we can, um, I'm going to try to stay in my riverbanks of the text, uh, but I mean, this is, you know, as you think about our society and our culture it's like the only true thing is that if you turn on public radio public tv is that it's not true (laughs) is that you can easily say that here but here paul is is coming right at it and and he's revealing this truth and it's from heart that has been transformed okay let's let's remember paul's testimony uh, that he in a sense really was a murderer saved by grace and commissioned now to, to preach and proclaim the good word uh, the gospel here and so this in in verse 18 uh, we see this word to hold okay unrighteousness of hold here oh I guess it's not in this translation uh, but as we see here this word hold in verse 18, hold down or suppress. Men knew the truth about God, but they didn't allow the truth to work in their lives. They suppressed it in order that they might live their own lives and not be convicted by the truth of God. Here, And, and, and so much, <laughs> man, over and over throughout the, the world and the culture, this is, this is what we see is the suppressing of the truth. And so, that's why we need to be people of the word, right? People who know our Bibles, have our Bibles uh, and within our hearts, but ready, man, to be able to really sift uh, through the lies of, of, of reality, uh, of culture, uh, and, and to be, man, hold fast to Christ Jesus. And so here Paul is just reminding us that, that this revelation in verse 19 and verse 20. So in verse 18 he had this for revelation here, and now he has this since revelation here uh, in verse 19 and 20. It says, that for what can be known about God is plain to them, okay? Because God has shown it to them. God has shown it to them. So this revelation since. And now uh, ultimately uh, verses 18 and through 20 here is this intelligence that people began knowing God but turned from the truth and they rejected God here. And God revealed himself to mankind through creation, the things that he's made. And, and what a blessing that is, especially now it's deer season, right? If you get out in nature, you're like, wow, this is awesome. Right? Uh, compared to being in the city or downtown, you're like, this is not awesome. <laughs> uh, but as you ex- ex- see God's beauty and wonder, you're like, oh man, there is a creator. There is a creation, right? I mean, there's so many things from birds singing to uh, trees waving and wind blowing to the waters going. I mean, we're a town, right? I mean, just right outside the door here of the church is, is the Rogue River. Uh, and so we can see that through nature, man, the creation of God and the things that he's made. And, and from the world around us, uh, humans knew that there was a God who had the wisdom 
to plan and the power to create here. And so Paul's reminding him, hey, this is this, this wisdom here. God has revealed himself. Uh, and in verse 20 here, humans realize that the creator, he's eternal, and there's this, this Godhead. And Psalms 19, verse 1, uh, let, uh, can you pull up Psalms 19, verse 1? It says, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the skies above proclaim his handiwork. I don't know about you, but it seems like the last couple of weeks there's been some amazing sunsets. Uh, and and God, it's like God's just kind of showing off. Uh, I think it was Tuesday night was an awesome one. Uh, and, and so you just see the beauty and the awesome and the wonder of God here. And so Paul is saying here that this, this was what we're looking at. Our first point here, verses 18 through 20 here, is that there's this revelation of God, but there's this wrath of God in that revelation because people were blinded and suppressed the truth, suppressed the truth here. Uh, and so let's keep moving. Our second point is going to be in Romans 21 uh, through 23. And this we're going to see now the reasons for the wrath of God. And so instead of worshiping its a creator, okay, let's see how his, his, his argument's going to unfold here. I love it. Uh, and the human race descends into idolatry and worships the creation, okay? Uh, many people will worship the gifts from God. God, give me, give me, give me. Every time they pray to God, it's like this super Santa Claus list, right? Give me this. Please, God, help me get this. Please, God. I remember a guy, he's like, man, God was so good. He gave me everything I asked for. <laughs> I'm like, really? Okay, man. And I'm like, that's a real shallow way to, to have a relationship with God if it's really one-sided. Here, He's not Santa Claus here. And so Paul is saying here that they, because they have rejected God, now uh, this, there's these reasons for wrath. And let's look at verse 21 here. In verse 21, it says, here's the reason for, although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. So see this progression here that Paul's talking about. Verses 18 through 20 was the, the revelation of the wrath of God. They knew God. They knew his creation here. And now in verses 21 through 23, the reasons for this wrath of God. Well, they're not into God. They don't want to have anything to do by God. And so he's saying, here's how their thinking changed and their foolishness hearts and it was darkened. Man, what a picture that Paul is, is, is painting for us, if you will. And so 20, verse 21 here this reasons for this wrath, if we were to fill in the blank, is they're not glorifying the Creator. And then he's going to draw out this argument in verses 21 and through 23, and he's going to do it like this, and I could do it, sum it up in one word, is ignorance. Uh, and so let's look at verse 22 uh, now. For although they knew God, they did not honor Him as God or give thanks to Him. That is very ignorant, Right? If you know something, but you choose not to do something, right, that is ignorant, but they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Verse 22, claiming to be wise, they became fools. My goodness. I, if I think about 2022, if you rewind all the experts, <laughs> right, and you're here now 936 days later of a global pandemic, uh, how many people have you seen claiming to be experts who are just absolute fools, right? Uh, and verse 23 says, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images re resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Look at this exchange that's happening here. Like real powerful, awesome, wonderful beauty here and imitation okay i had a friend uh good buddy uh he was from new new zealand and he was a maori as as a, a, as a polynesian uh from new zealand and and he's like he's like dave i don't get america he's like you sell all i like when i go to the grocery store you guys love imitation things he's like you love all this like butter that says it's not butter but tastes like butter he's like 
what, what is up with that, man? And he's like, you have sour cream and it's like fat free. You have soda and it's all diet. He's like, everything you have, there's like, it's all fake. It's not real. And you guys love. And it's like, he's like, I don't get that. And he's like, we're, we're so different. In New Zealand, we have just butter is butter. <laughs> and I just laugh. I'm like, but it's a good commercial. I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> and it just rings so, so true and gets me so good here. But he's like, why? You guys love fake fake stuff. And I'm like, nail on the head for United States of America here. We are ignorant. Yes, indeed, we are here. Uh, ignorant, as Wikipedia would define it here as we think about verses 21 through 23, this ignorance, um, it's not only a lack of information here, it's an adjective that describes a person in the state of being unaware. And this is Hum, uh, Wikipedia is human secular as it comes. And, and here's what they're saying is ignorance here. Uh, a person of being unaware. Absolutely, right? Uh, as we think about this ignorance in verses 21 through 23 here. And ultimately, in verses 22 through 23, to sum it up, what are they doing? What's Paul preaching against? He's, he's given this ladder as a warning against what's happening here in Rome is that they're glorifying the creation. They're glorifying the creation, not the creator, right? And so many times, like I said, is that people will desire these gifts uh, from God but forget or be cheaply satisfied in those things and not seeking and desiring the gift giver. There's such a big difference in that. One is absolute relationship and one is uh, like eating a meal, like you're going to be hungry again at the next time, uh, the next day for sure. The next, uh, if you eat breakfast, you're going to be hungry later on in the day. You're going to eat and eat lunch. So it's going to leave you not full and not satisfied. And Paul is trying to point the people here, he's trying to exhort us here that you're, you're missing it. You're missing it. And why you're missing it and how you're missing it is that you're, you're, you're going down here for this creation. And, and he talks about man-made things. And, and, and he's going he's gonna to keep divulging. He's going to keep going on now. Now, what is this, this wrath of God? So we saw in verses 18 through 20, we saw the revelation of the wrath of God in creation. Now, in verses 21 through 23, we saw the reasons for the wrath of God, ignorance, okay? Now, verses 24 through 32, we're going to see the results of, of the wrath of God. And this is the fun part. This, uh, I heard a story, these students uh, in, uh, in the UK, what they did, they took this part of, of, of the passage of the text and they, they took out all the numbers. So you couldn't see that it was a Bible verse. And they, they printed it out and they just put it in kind of a cool font. And they put it all over the campus <laughs> of, of just a, a normal public uh, university, okay? And so it didn't say that it was from the book of Romans at all, okay? They just put it out there. And uh, the students got called uh, by one of the, uh, I guess it's a college chancellor here, and he was like, why are you guys spreading hate speech all over the, all over the campus here? <laughs> uh, and then he's like, the person who wrote this is, is going to be expelled from the college. Uh, and so the students just kind of like laughed at each other, <laughs> like, uh, well, Paul wrote it. So, <laughs> uh, and, and so, it, but it was really funny to think about the response of this university uh, to uh, the Book of Romans, especially here to chapter number one. Uh, and so, let's look now here at the results of the wrath of God, uh, and and uh, and we're going to start in verse twenty-four. Uh, but I want us to think about this. This is kind of what we're going to kind of teach here. So, so because of immorality, okay, because of this immorality, it's going to spring, okay. It's, if, if you plant a seed here of immorality, it's going uh, to become and grow the fruit of, of idolatry here. And, and the holy God, check this out, is, he's justified here uh, in his wrath against an unholy practices of the human race, okay. God can do what God wants to do, how God wants to do, right? Who am I to say that? Now, you're like, ah, it's Pacific Northwest, man. Like, this is 2022, okay? It doesn't, like, it should, this, this Bible's got to come into my culture, not me go into it, <laughs> right? Human, human secular uh, 
values and vibes uh, meets the word of God. Well, truth is truth, and it a changing, and it's it, it, it's everlasting, and it's a foundational for us. So, man, praise the Lord! Aren't you grateful and thankful for truth? Man, I so am. I am. I am so am. Praise the Lord as I think about God's word uh, and and His truth. And so, let's look at a verse. We're going to look at uh, Psalms fourteen, verse one. Psalms fourteen, verse one. And again, this is coming right at you. All right. And so. Uh, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. This is the psalmist saying. They do, do abominable deeds. There is none who does good. Man, oh, it's, just, it's coming right at us today. I love it here. And so as we think about the, today's text, this idolatry always results in immorality. Okay, wrong thinking is going to produce wrong behavior, right? Wrong thinking is going to produce wrong behavior. So if you do not value someone or something, when your mind tells you to cut that person off or uh, hurt that person, what, what is stopping you from doing that if you don't value them, right? Nothing, right? You, you live and do how you please then, right? So let, let's keep that in mind as we look at God's word. Proverbs, he goes on. And this, again, the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. So uh, I'm going to give you some, some uh, verses to correlate here. Let's look at Proverbs uh, 29, verse 18, uh, where there is no prophetic vision the people cast off restraint, is how the Proverbs put it. But blessed is he who keeps the law, right? And how many times in your life have you been blessed by right thinking? Right thinking produces right actions, <laughs> right? Because if you devalue something, you're, it, it, you just, you're, you're hurting, you, you can... Burn the whole thing down, right? What's why? If you don't value humanity, right? We, we've seen this in our country: multiple terrorist attacks. Whether that was in Oklahoma City, whether that was at 9/11, right? People's world views were pushed upon us, and what did we? We suffered terrorism, right, in our country, uh, because of these world views clashed, and it was. America is the great devil, or Satan, right? All these things, or the Unabomber, all these people had distorted thinking. And so those distorted thinking, those wrong thinking, produced something and was evil and wicked. So may we see that, that where really starts with us at home in our lives and our heart here. Uh, and so praise the Lord. So verses 24 through 27, I'm going to sum this up here. Is, is he's going to show us, so let's look at, at Romans chapter 1, uh, verse 24, we'll go through 27, is that we're depraved in the body, okay? So here's how, here's how Paul puts it. He says, therefore, God gave them up in the lust of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves. So does God care about your body? Does God care what you put into your body? Does God care how you adorn your body? Does God care about your body? What does the scripture say here, right? Well, there, there's a connection. There's a connection here. Paul's putting this forward that there's this connection with actions, with your thinking, your, your, your hearts, Right? Uh, and so may we never disconnect that in our lives, right? God loves us. God is good. And he, he has, he's just so good. And I think so many times because our, hard, our hearts will get hard and we'll make mistakes and stuff. And that's when we get into this trouble here. And so this dishonoring of the bodies among themselves. And so uh, Paul's going to continue on. It gets real here. Uh, verse 25. It says, because, here's why, though. I love this explanation. So you know why the bad thing is happening, why the evil and the wicked thing and the, the immoral thing is happening. Well, verse 25, because they exchanged. 
See this word right here, an exchange. When you go to the grocery store, you're buying a bag of tomatoes, right? And that, that, that uh, cashier is going to say, that'll be, well, now it used to be five bucks. Now it's like 20 bucks, right? That'll be 20 bucks. And so you're going to have to see, is that tomato, is that thing worth the, are you going to make that exchange? Does that tomatoes have that value that you're willing to give your hard-earned money for those things? And you would say, yeah, sure, okay, I'll make that exchange. So there's this willful act happening because of what you believe and what you value, okay? Now remember, at, what, you, what you believe, it, it makes a difference, right? And so because they exchanged the truth, about God for a lie. So you love this comparison contrasting here. Truth and a lie, okay? For a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. I love this here. Paul is showing here now this depravity. Verse 26 goes on. It says, for this reason, God gave them up. Who gave them up? God, okay? <laughs> God gave them up to dishonorable passions. This isn't a good thing. This is not, when God gives you up, right? This is not a good place or a good thing to do here. For their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature here. And so God has a beautiful order, and this order would be how God originally made Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis. God had a wonderful plan here. Nowadays, we'll see that in when the public education, and don't forget who pays for the public education, okay? In the United States of America, who pays for the public education, okay? And what do they teach here is that this you can be any gender, anything you want, right? Absolutely, it's what they teach. So, when you have Romans, educate your kids. Don't be surprised if they turn out to be Romans, right? Because if you're paying them, right? Yeah. I know, the truth is crazy, isn't it? (laughs) What did I do? What am I paying for? No, I ain't. Yeah, you are. You you can look on your taxes and see specifically what city, right, you live in, and you'll see how much is going to that education, right? At least on my property tax and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, you do. It's crazy, isn't it? (laughs) Yeah. Verse 26, for this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions for their women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. Verse 27, 27 says, And the men, so not just the women, but the men, and the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another. Men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in them the due penalty for their error. Anybody heard of an STD? I won't ask you to raise your hand if you've had one. Uh, but there is a real, right, this warning here, the, the Bible saying, don't do that. This is a, there's an order, a way of which, a blessing here. But because of the thinking, produce this actions. And what was this action? Very far away from God. And it says there that it was uh, receiving in themselves a due penalty for their error. And like, oh, Christians are just mad at, at, uh, and then about the AIDS. Christians are mad about monkeypox. Christians are mad about all these things. They hate San Francisco. They hate all these things, right? Oh, all, and, and you're like, I don't hate. I'm just, here's what the Word of God says, guys. Here's what the Word of God says. And so at this time here, so 
they're, what they're, they're deprived in their bodies, okay? They're depraved in their body, verse 24 through 27 here. And then also this indulgence. And, and they've taken these liberties. They've been confused here. And this practice is allowing, okay, indulgence, Wikipedia says. Indulgence here uh, means, ver- as I look at verse 24 and 27, just kind of summing it up, the practice of enjoyment of whatever is desired. Any, anybody ever been to Vegas? <laughs> It, yeah, or, well, yeah, I should, you know, hey, what happens there stays there. I know. I broke the rule right there. But is, is that whatever, whatever you want goes, right? And that, that's what's crazy about the Internet is that's a highway where you can one click away from anything you want, right? You just put in your little credit card number and you can uh, go get whatever you want. And so how do we live with wisdom? wisdom, right? How do we use things for God's glory? Well, we need to be educated, right? We need to be informed. And so Paul's helping us in that sense. And so um, verse 26 is this truth of God, okay? Truth of God was given um, the human race over to the pursuit of a life that's based on idol worship. Uh, Let's see, verse 26. Let's look at verse 26. Uh, for the reason God gave them gave them up to this dishonorable passage was for um, for their women exchanged natural natural relationship for those that are contrary to nature. And so remember, he laid the foundation here. God has, has revealed Himself. God has been known in nature here, but people chose to use to worship the creator creation, not the creator. And so Paul's elaborating on that argument now of saying they've exchanged the natural relationship for those that are contrary to nature, right? Because you're, how you think, right, is going ha- to change is going to affect how you act here. Uh, and so whether that worship is is outright or it's subtle, right? The philosophies built on their own moral and speculative. Pr- uh, uh, perse- perseverance is here. So they exchange these natural relationships for that that is contrary to nature. Here. All right, verse 26 and 27. At this time, okay, this is the normative. 26, 27, homosexuality is normative in the Roman Empire. So much so, out of the 15 emperors, 14 of them practice homosexuality here. All right, so Paul is coming right at a... It's not a new thing, okay? Pride Month isn't a new thing, right? You, people might think it is. Uh, it, it, it's not, right? And so the Word of God, look how relevant it is and how teaching of truth and stuff here. So he's coming right at this. So as, as we think about this, as you're exposed and, and thinking about the, the world and the people's behaviors here, I hope you see uh, here how it all is coming together and what is the hope in it all. But as I think about application, okay, for us Christians, us who love Jesus, let's think about this. Does it matter? Does it matter what we think? Does it matter what we say? And does it matter what we do? See the, see the progress on Matthew? Does it matter? You got you to gotta, you gotta have that, that solved right off the bat, okay? So when you hear God's word teaching on who God is and what happened with man, why it's become such a depraved state, okay? Well, what you realize is that, man, we're pretty stinking ugly here. We're pretty stinking gross. And this is the point. If you don't know what you're saved from, right, how will you receive the gospel? How will you receive that? If you think your life's all awesome, like my buddy says, I got everything that I ever prayed for. (laughs) <laughs> I'm sure he's like, dude, you're such a liar. <laughs> like you're, you're Pinocchio 101, man. Like, your nose is growing. I don't even buy that for a second, right? Uh, and, and and so, but it's like, yeah, how we easily, oh, right? And 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 does it matter what we say? Does it matter what we think? Does it matter what we do? Right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so I'm gonna be uh, finishing up here in 28 and 32. 28 and 32, check this out here. Paul doesn't leave anything. I mean, he just goes at it here. So verse 28, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, okay? 
And again, this is his letter that he's written here to Rome, to these Gentiles, to these Jews, but specifically now he's focusing on these Gentiles here. It says, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them. Got to see that. God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. So as you think about our culture and our world, and you're like, what is going on? <laughs> why, why is all these things happening? What, you know, why is all these things happening here? God is in control. God is in control. Either he is or he isn't in control, right? And he is in control, and he's a good God. Verse 29, and they were filled with all manner of unrighteousness. And then here he gets really specific, and I'm really thankful for this, right? I I like to to know specifics, and Paul's very, very good at giving these details here. And they were full of envy, of murder, of strife, deceit, maliciousness, their gossips. Okay, verse 30, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors, inventors of evil. Man, I think, I think of Nazi Germany, man. It was like, oh my gosh, they did that, right? They were inventors of evil. You think about what's going on here in 2020, uh, 2022, man, there's like inventors of evil, yes. Uh, disobedient to parents, all the parents in the house, Ooh, all right. You can use that verse. <laughs> uh, verse 31, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Uh, verse 32, though they know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. So the title of today was Everyone Needs the Gospel. Everyone Needs the Gospel. Amen. Everyone needs the gospel. As I think about verses 28 through 32, it was this deprived mind, this depravity here. Uh, it was like the days of Noah. Genesis, can you pull up uh, Genesis 6, 5? And in the days of Noah, what was it like? Well, the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. They're like, man, I should have came to church next week, not this week. <laughs> yeah, right? Man, and this is like, the hope is Christ, right? And this is how Christ rejuvenates us. But we need to know that we need a Savior, right? I was talking to a pastor, and they were, they were thinking that everyone goes to heaven. And I'm, and I'm scratching my head, and I'm like, what do you mean? You just negated any reason for Jesus dying on the cross for your sins. Because if you think everyone's going to heaven, right, why would Christ come to save and to redeem, right, as a universalist? And, and, and I'm just like, how on earth are we we're reading totally different Bibles, man? Here, and this is what the, 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 this, uh, the reality of, man, is that... Man, and I'm a great sinner. When I look in the mirror, when I look in the mirror, I see a great sinner, right? But as Martin Luther would say, remember that, that quote from Martin Luther that I read earlier? When I look at myself, I don't see how I can be saved. But when I look at Christ, I don't see how I can be lost. And this is the hope, man, that is in Jesus. And Paul is fervent on this, why people need the gospel, why they need to know that Jesus forgives them of their sins, why they need to know that heaven is a reality for those who have put their faith and hope and trust in Christ Jesus, and that Jesus loves you, man. See, the Bible puts it this way in John three sixteen: for God so loved the world that what? For God so loved the world that what? Yeah, he gave us only that whoever would what? Believe in him would what? Not per- but what? Everlasting life, right? And so this what here, God has provided a way, right? It's perfect sacrifice in Christ Jesus here. And so as I think about today's text, man, because mankind, 
okay, has chosen to reject, okay, the clear evidence. This is what Paul, right, early on in the, in, the, in the verse 18 through 20 here, this clear evidence of God's existence, right? So if you don't believe that God existed, he can't rule, right? So they don't believe in his existence or his rule. God has allowed the human race to demonstrate to itself exactly how devastating life, right, can be when lived in rebellion against God. So when you're trying to make sense of 936-ish days in this pandemic or of the world and why you're not happy or why you're not filled with joy, right, you're trying to make sense, right, and, and you're thinking like, man, the world and what's going on here. Well, see, God's showing in your heart or revealing your heart that you need him. You need him. And he's the hope, man. He's the hope. Uh, and I'm so thankful and grateful for him. Amen. He's so good. And so Paul puts this argument in these three stages. And what we looked at here in chapter 1, verses 18 through 20, is that there's this revelation of wrath of God. Okay. Secondly, we looked at verses 21 through 23, the reasons for the wrath of God, okay? And then lastly, in verses 24 through 32, is the results of the wrath of God. God loves us. He loves us, right? And now you're like, I'm breathing air, and so that is the grace of God because today you can know him as Lord, Savior, forever, friend. Praise the Lord. You totally can, amen? That's good news. Amen. Let's go ahead and stand. Aren't you, I mean, aren't you grateful for the truth? And, and, and my heart is this. If I didn't love you, I wouldn't <laughs> preach through this. <laughs> right? Uh, and, and we need this. We need this. We need to know in this day, in this hour, right, that we, man, are saved, and, and how, how as we look in the world through these gospel lenses, how we should live our lives. And I pray that you would be encouraged, right? You're like, man, that was the most offensive sermon I've ever heard today. <laughs> like, that was, oh my gosh, look at the scriptures, look at the scriptures, look at the scriptures, read these scriptures, read it over again. I pray, right? I pray. God will give you a revelation of his word, okay? And you're like, that doesn't work. I mean, I love these people who so much. Yes, and they're deprived. Paul loves them too. <laughs> and that's why he's going to go to them. <laughs> he actually does get to Rome. Remember, we at the end of Acts, he gets to Rome. And he does love these people. But everyone needs the gospel, okay? Everyone needs this gospel. It is good news and it sets us free, amen? It sets us free. So let's pray, and then we're going to uh, sing a song. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word, Lord. Father, we pray now for those people that are in our lives, Lord, that are practicing this open lifestyle, uh, this deprived lifestyle, Lord, in our lives. And, and Paul gives us a long list. It's not just homosexuality, uh, but uh, it's people that are disobedient to their parents, uh, it's people that are malicious, it's people that are gossips, man. Uh, and, and so it, it's all of these different things, Lord. We pray, God, for your grace. Lord, we thank you for your truth, for your word, Lord. And as we get into your word, it gets into us, Lord. And I'm so, so thankful and I'm so humbled by your word, Lord. I'm humbled by your word, Lord. It, it, it's so, in this day and age when everybody wants to censor everything, Lord, that's truth, Lord, and just wants to hear the, the emotions uh, and he who cries the loudest uh, gets heard in our culture nowadays. God, help us. Help us navigate, God, these waters. Lord, help us to speak truth. Help us to believe the truth, Lord. And in believing, Father, the actions that are going to be produced by our right believing or right thinking, God. We're thankful for that, God, that you would come and save us. Father, as I think about this word, this message today, as I'm, I'm grateful for my testimony that you would save this dirt bag, man. You would save me, Lord. You would save me, Lord. And now, God, I get to make you famous, God, with my life, Lord. I get to do that, Lord. I get to make you famous 
at the, at the bookstore, at the coffee shop, at the grocery store, at school, and at work, in my families, in my home, Lord. I get to do that, Lord. And I thank you for each one of my brothers and sisters now, by faith alone, through Christ alone, through Jesus alone, that they can be saved. God, that they won't be, uh, God, have to endure your wrath, but can have salvation today, Lord. And so I pray now, God, if there be those, God, who are under your wrath now, God, that they would put their faith in you now today, Lord. Thank you, God, for my brothers and sisters here. I pray that you would set them free, Lord. God, that your truth would set them free. If they're struggling, Lord, with these uh, different um, subjects here within the text today, if they're struggling with that, Lord, I pray now, God, that they would see the truth, Lord, and see the root, Lord, of it, Lord. Help them, God, I pray. We love you, God, and we thank you, Father. Lord, use us, God, to minister to your gospel to others, God, because everyone needs to know your gospel, Lord. We love you, God, and we thank you. It's in your good name we pray all these things, God. And all God's people would say, amen. is all I need and the chains that I was in before they don't hold me anymore His love is rescue me oh His love has set me free in one moment everything changed who I was got washed away when mercy found the Savior's arms were open wide, and I felt love for the very first time when mercy found me. My mind found peace, my soul found hope, my heart found a home. Mercy found 
just uh, uh, before we dismiss, we're just going to, George is going to play softly and at the, man, uh, a prayer on your heart, uh, a Bible verse uh, for mutual edification of the body. Man, we'd like to allow you just an opportunity to, to, to pray out, read that out. Um, and we're just in agreement with you. If there's a prayer request, man, just lift that up. So we're just going to go before the Lord now and just get, get allow you this opportunity, and then, we'll, uh, then I'll dismiss us here. Anybody like to pray out? Feel free if you'd like. So, Lord. I just thank you, God, for your word. If it, Lord, if it, <laughs> if it wasn't for your word, where would I be, Lord? I would be exactly where these Romans were who Paul was <laughs> warning of, Lord. We would be totally deba- debased, Lord, totally deprived. And Father, we're redeemed and saved. The cross is beautiful. The salvation, the good news is amazing. Lord, our sin is nasty. Our sin is disgusting. It's repulsive, Lord. Father, and I just, Lord, pray, Lord, for the church, the reality, God. I know people just walk out on (laughs) hearing Romans 1. (laughs) Uh, God, how you reveal yourself to us is through your written word, Lord. Uh, and people have made assumptions about you, Lord, uh, and they've used that as an excuse, Lord, to live uh, in a way that doesn't honor and please you, Lord. You call us to be holy. You're a holy and righteous God, Lord, and that's the whole reason for the cross is that the only substitute holy and worthy enough was your perfect son, not us. We could never earn our own righteousness, Lord. And so, Father, I thank you for the truth, Lord. And I know that rubs people the wrong way, Lord. <laughs> it just does, Lord. Uh, and so I pray, Lord, that, God, your word would convict. Lord, it would encourage. Lord, it would do the work that it wants to do, Lord. And people would be real enough and honest enough, God, as they come to Scripture to be humble and that they don't know at all, that what TV teaches and movies teach them or Disney is, is, is cramming down the kids' throats, Lord, uh, is wrong, Lord. And there is truth, Lord. And we don't have to be living under the wrath or be debased, God, or be lost. But, Father, there's freedom in you, God. And so I thank you for that. The gospel's beautiful. The gospel's wonderful. It's life-changing, Lord. Thank you, God, for sending your Son to save us from that wrath, God, that we did deserve, Lord. God, and salvation is amazing and it's beautiful, Lord. Father, and I thank you for this text, Lord. I thank you for the challenge, Lord, uh, where, I, where <laughs> I was, as I was thinking and praying through this, was like, do I water this down or do I just keep it legit? Lord, uh, thank you that you bring us to these crossroads, Lord, where we just got to bring it and we just got to depend on you, Lord, because your word is truth, Lord. And so thank you, God. I love you, Lord. I love 
my brothers and sisters here, Lord. God, we know that uh, this is good for us, Lord. And so may we lean into your word, Lord. May we be transformed and renewed day by day, God, as Paul would teach you, yeah? So we love you, God, and we thank you, God. You're so, so good. We love you. It's in your good name we pray all these things. And all God's people would say, amen. Well, God bless you guys, and uh, I love you. And uh, we'll see you same time, same station next week. God bless you.